Hello, so this is part two of our adding, subtracting, and multiplying workshop. Um, this video is going to focus on subtracting decimals. So in the second top section, you can go ahead and label it subtracting, okay? Subtracting is very similar to adding in a sense that we need to make sure we line up our decimal places, but instead of doing addition, we are gonna start doing some subtraction, some takeaway. So again, we're gonna look at two examples. So the first example we're going to look at is we're going to look at 12.2 minus 9.75. So 12 and 2 tenths minus 9 and 75 hundredths. Okay. So you'll notice again, I have lined up my place values. So my tenths place are lined up, my decimal points are lined up, my ones place is lined up and so forth. OK, so I'm going to go about doing the subtraction just like how I typically subtract problems um, in order to be able to subtract something. Um, in order to be able to subtract five away from something, we can put a placeholder here of zero. Um, so if we subtract, we can't do zero minus five. I mean, we can. We've learned about negatives, but in this case, uh, we're going to have to borrow. So we're going to borrow from the two. So this becomes a 1. This now becomes a 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 1 minus 7, we're going to have to borrow again. So this 1 now becomes an 11. This 2 now becomes a 1. 11 minus 7 is 4. I keep my decimal point. And then if we look at this kind of holistically, this is 11. 11 minus 9 is 2. So 12.2 minus 9.75 is equal to 2 and 45 hundredths or 2.5. Four or five. Okay. So it's just really important. Like with adding, we line up our decimal places. In this case with subtracting, we kind of have to remember those borrowing rules. Now, um, in the adding video, I gave you an example of a negative plus a positive. I'm going to give you an example of a positive and a negative decimal subtraction problem. So let's say we have the problem 16.2 minus a negative 3.1. Okay, so we're going to subtract a negative. Now, if I go back and look at some examples of subtracting a negative, or if I go back and look at my rules, subtracting a negative or just subtracting in general, we can follow the process of what's called adding the opposite. So um, I can rewrite this problem as 16.2 plus the opposite of negative 3.1, which is just going to be positive 3.1. So this right here, 16.2 plus 3.1, that is the same problem. Remember when we subtract a negative, it's like the subtraction is saying we want to take away, but the negative saying, hey, do the opposite. We're actually going to put this amount back. Okay. So a lot of times when we subtract a negative or excuse me, every time we subtract a negative, we end up at a value that is bigger than what we start with. So our answer is going to be bigger than 16.2. So if we do this now, we converted this to an addition problem. If we solve this, um, we can rewrite it like this. So if we line up our place value, 16.2, 3.1. And if we add 2 plus 1 is 3. Keep my decimal point. 16 plus 3 is 19.3. So that's actually going to be the answer. When we take away a negative, we're actually going to end up at this positive value of 19.3. Okay. And if you're a little bit confused about why I didn't subtract those two numbers, I encourage you to go back and look at your integer uh, subtraction notes that we've done where we model on a number line why we subtract by negatives. Okay. So um, this is just an example of subtraction. Remember, not only do we need to line up place values, but we also need to keep in mind our integer rules, because now that we have some decimals involved, uh, we may have some problems where we end up in the negatives or we end up back up in the positives if we're subtracting by a negative and so forth. Um, now you need to go watch the final video, which is all about multiplying decimals.